welcome, welcome, welcome to today's episode. It's another fe- another feature by UME Radio. I'm DJ Kelly, of course, and welcome, welcome to today. How's your morning going? What's your Tuesday like? It's a beautiful day for me. Outside is looking wonderful, and I'm happy, happy, happy to be here. So, for this special episode of Hot Topic Tuesdays, we have a couple of stories that we want to talk about. Um, there are three stories we want to talk about. We're going to talk about Wendy, we're going to talk about R. Kelly, and we're also going to be talking about um, Sasha Obama and who she's dating. All right, so remember, I'm DJ Kelly, and you're listening to UME Radio. Thank you so much for being here with us. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe, like the video, share the video, and comment. Let us know what your thoughts are about the story, what you felt about it. Do you have an opinion on it? Is there a special topic you'd like us to talk about, like, like me to talk about or to share information on? Just just tell me in the comment section, but please join me. Don't let me be here by myself. <laughs> join me and let's do this. Let's get updated on what's happening with these three hot topics. All right. Great. Fantastic. So let's us begin the first one so it's welcome to hot topics tuesday and we're going to be speaking about wendy williams who is speaking out herself okay so um the headline that we for the story that we're going to be talking about right now and courtesy this story is courtesy of atlantablackstar.com support them please support black businesses black owned businesses so the, the the headline for the story is i'll make more money wendy williams decides on podcasts after getting axed from television gig and the story was written by rachel gorge and it, sorry rachel george and it was published on the 28th of june june 28 2022 All right, so it reads, Wendy Williams received less than a farewell after news broke that the Wendy Williams show was canceled, effective this month, which is June. The primetime television slot has been replaced by comedian Sherry Shepard and the Sherry Shepard show arriving this fall. This decision came months after Shepard and other guests, guests, hosts filled in for Wendy sorry filled in for williams during season 14 in her absence the 57 year old gossip queen battled with health issues and a lawsuit against wells fargo bank over access to her funds not to mention the celebrated talk show host was excluded from the finale episode of her long-running series that aired on friday june 17 isn't that sad how would you feel if that happened to you? I'd be so sad. I would not want that to happen to me. I would at least want to be able to be present for a fair for the farewell, you know, and and to say goodbye to, to the audience who's been list, who've been listening to her and watching her for years, fourteen seasons. Anyway, um, but don't fret. Williams reportedly is planning to make even more money with her upcoming podcast. TMZ caught up with the former radio host as she was getting out of a car wearing a supreme hoodie and denim shorts, holding an expensive crocodile Birkin bag. <laughs> I'm not sure why that was important, her expensive Birkin bag. Podcast, of course, answered Williams when asked, What's next? Which will make more money for me? Oh, she says, which will make more money for me than doing the TV show, she added. Will Selby, Williams' manager and executive producer of the podcast, said she's less focused on TV at the moment. He also told the outlet she recently had a chat with two of her favorites in the music world, rappers Snoop Dogg and Fat Joe. Kevin Kevin Hunter, Williams' ex-husband, slammed production for the Wendy Williams show, Rightly so. And Lionsgate owned media company Debmar Mercury. The former executive producer was released from his role on the daytime talk show after Wendy Williams, sorry, after Williams filed for divorce in 2019. The pair, which tied the knot in 2009, it was a 10 year marriage, finalized their divorce a year later. 
During an interview with Entertainment Tonight, Hunter admitted he wasn't fond of Williams, uh, Williams's exclusion from the show's farewell episode. Neither was I. I feel like it is a travesty on the part of Demar Mercury to have such an unceremonious departure without Wendy being involved. A lack, a lack of professionalism throughout the process and in the way um, they are letting Wendy go out, he said. After 13 years, the show has been sorry. After 13 years, the show has been made a mockery the last two seasons and the reasons the show is having its untimely demise will come out very soon, he added. It's true. Let, let's, let's, I mean, people may be looking at this now and thinking, oh, it's Wendy. She has fame. She has money. And, and it's so sad that sometimes when people are seemingly successful, um, they're, they're not as advocated for as other people. But let's put this into perspective of an employee. You're working at a place for 13 years. On a, you're working on a project right and this happens to you where they just release you they have they just end your your thing without even as much as a you know what a thank you well i don't know if what happens in the back end but this is a television show right so it's it's a it's a it's a public platform just as if in your case you'd want to have known that if you're working in an office the projects you were working on gets closed properly the people you were working with you get to say um to, to address them appropriately on that final that finale that they're having right so i mean people are people at the end of the day and everyone feels so this is this is very sad i believe i agree with with what her um ex-husband said i i agree it's so unceremonious you know but then and and we also have to check our karma i tell you and i'm not saying this is when this karma karma or anything but we also have to pay attention to how we treat people because th that thing comes back you know what i mean so i wish i wish of course miss wendy i wish you all the best um and i would never have wished this for you at all i wouldn't have wished this for my worst enemy it's just wrong to do it that way it's just wrong y'all it's just wrong you know allow her time it's a public platform and, and the world is watching work something out work something out to have her come on um to do a final or whatever like work it out work it out is what i say that, that's just my opinion anyway i don't know how you guys feel about it tell me tell leave share it in the comment section how do you feel about that story what if that happened to you or someone you knew someone you know yeah how would you feel about it all right now the next story that we're going to talk about is um r kelly right um the headline for this story well <laughs> yeah the, the, the headline for it, for this story, the lawyers are speaking and they are not happy with the verdict or with the, with the decision that the judge has taken. Um, so let's look at this one. So the headline reads, and, and, and again, thanks to AtlantaBalakStar.com for carrying this story. This enterprise was overcharged. R. Kelly's lawyer says they plan to appeal 30 year sentence. And this story was written by hmm, A. Germain. That's what I'll say. And it was published yesterday, June 30. Sorry, it was published on June 30. Grammy Award winning singer songwriter R. Kelly was sentenced was sentenced to over three decades in prison on Wednesday, June 29, after being convicted and found guilty of federal racketeering and sex trafficking charges. His lawyers have already revealed plans to appeal the decision. Jennifer B is what I'll say. Bonjean, it looks B-O-N-J-E-A-N. Um, a lawyer for the disgraced R&B singer claims that her client was overcharged, referencing the singer's one count of racketeering charge. Before sentencing, Bonjean told reporters at a press conference that they were prepared and that we are now prepared to fight this appeal. We are excited for this appeal that we are bringing. Obviously, you know, it was a hard day. 
he has been sentenced to a serious he has been sentenced to a serious sentence but we are confident in our in our arguments that we raised in our post trial motions that although they didn't persuade the district court judge they will persuade the court of appeals bonjean uh, said later in a statement following the decision We've always believed in those arguments and we believe that this enterprise was overcharged and that the circuit second court court of appeal sorry and that the circuit second circuit court of appeals will see it that way she added last September a jury convicted the ignition singer on nine counts including one racketeering charge and eight violations of the man act a sex trafficking law prosecutors accused the chicago native of using his status as a celebrity and a network of people at his disposal to target girls boys and young women for his own sexual gratification authorities had initially asked the presiding official u.s district court judge ann donnelly to sentence the 55 year old star to more than 25 years while his defense requested 10 or fewer, citing that more than 25 years was tantamount to a life sentence, CNN reported. Although sex was certainly a weapon that you used, this is not a case about sex, Judge Donnelly, Donnelly um, said following the decision. It's a case about violence, cruelty, and control. You left in your wake a trail of broken lives. Donnelly said she also considered the star's own traumatic childhood during the trial. Kelly's attorneys said the I Believe I Can Fly singer, whose full name is Robert Sylvester Kelly, was reportedly sexually abused by a family member and a landlord. Wow, that's so sad. In her statement, the judge said that the singer's experience may explain, at least in part, what led to your behavior, it most surely is not an excuse. Jovante Cunningham, a former backup singer for Kelly, applauded the sentencing, telling reporters outside the courthouse, I started this journey 30 years ago. There wasn't a day in my life up until this moment that I actually believed that the judicial system would come through for black and brown girls. She added, I stand here very proud of my judicial system, very proud of my fellow survivors, and very pleased with the outcome. To be honest, I, I don't really have any comment on this. I wish everyone well. I, I wish everyone well. I, if I were to say something about this, I would say it is my hope that a system or uh, um, a movement um, is developed around around um, the entertainment industry and also the sexual well-being of young people as a movement that not just sees one or two people being tried and going to court for for um different events or activities but that that a movement that will hold accountable all the players you know because when i look at this story and i it's very difficult for me to comment because i have not had any personal experiences and all i've heard is what has been reported and i don't know how fair the reports are you know what i mean because it's being reported as a, from a celebrity celebrity perspective in my opinion the reports are so celebrity um focused that i don't believe the reports are subject matter focused or or the 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 the, the crime focus you know what i mean it's just it's just my opinion right and so when it happens like that i'm not quite sure how to even have an opinion where were the mothers the fathers the i mean there's a bigger thing at play here where are the parents and and if the parents aren't there then we need to address the issues that 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 marginalizes people or or 
causes people to not be able to be effective parents? How do we address those things? So all of these sy symptomatic, I think these are all symptoms and we're treating the symptoms. But if we could develop a movement that deals with the underlining problems, the, 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 the community development issues that we're facing, then I think the outcomes could be better. I'm never happy at anybody's freedom being taken away or people's lives being at risk and things like that. It doesn't please me. Um, however, for, for, it, is my, it is my hope that justice um, has been served. And if it hasn't, then that it will right justice for all involved everyone and fairness you know equal responsibility is it, that's just how i feel about it if i if i'm to have something to say but um very 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 sad but you know at the end, at the end of the day we're all humans they're human beings too R. Kelly is another human being he's not just a celebrity he is a human being and we need to stop making humans into gods anyway um that's all i'm going to say about that the next story i want to look at i thought was a good um story to close out or close out this segment was um dad's advice on sasha or um, dating um sasha obama um he's an actor so <laughs> clifton powell it's on my son. Sorry, I'm on my son. <laughs> I'm on my son. Like every day, Clifton Powell reveals the advice he's given to son Clifton Powell Jr. about dating Sasha Obama. And this story was published on June 28 and written by Angelina Velas Velasquez. Actor, actor Clifton Powell Sr. is no relationship connoisseur. But when it comes to passing along helpful dating advice to his son, Clifton Powell Jr., he has a few notes. This past April, the actor's 25-year-old son became the talk of social media when it was revealed he is dating Sasha Obama, 21. According to Powell Sr., the young couple have been together for about a year. It took a while for the media to take notice. Dating the younger daughter of former President Barack Obama isn't the run-of-the-mill dating experience most folks imagine as their reality. The veteran actor said that while he is certain he raised his son to, to possess all the best qualities imaginable, he still peppers his son with advice. <laughs> I want him, Barack, to know and Michelle to know if they ever hear this, I'm on my son like every day, man, said the next door actor while appearing on the Dear Father's podcast. He continued, not in a negative way, but I might send him a meme or I might send him a quote as a reminder to continue doting his, sorry, continue dotting his I's and crossing his T's. We love the Obamas. But Mr. Obama has a daughter that's dating my son and I have an opportunity and a responsibility to make my son responsible, gentle, kind, loving, and supportive. The things that I did not get taught, the things that I did not get taught, he said. He noted his own father failed to teach him those things. But having grown up with the guidance of women, he quickly learned how to treat a lady with respect. Hmm. You could teach some of these men out here, I think, or two, I guess. <laughs> so I text him all the time and I say, treat Sasha like you would want somebody to treat your daughter. Aside from shock, reactions to the news of the Powell Jr. and Sasha dating were mixed. A aside from shock, reactions to the news of the Powell Jr. and Sasha dating were mixed. Some people on social media were thrilled the University, University of Southern California student had a, had a bow, while others were not so enthusiastic about her choice, many of which made pointed comments about there being a correlation in Powell Jr. and the sometimes menacing roles his father portrays on television and in the movies. That's so unkind. Where's the proof to back that up? 
He's a kid. He's 25. Give him a break. He's supposed to make mistakes. Anyway, <laughs> that's just my opinion. Those snide remarks are not lost on Powell Sr. I get a lot of negative comments. Oh, well, Sasha, be careful. Hope he not like his daddy, said the saint and sinner's actor. You know, people got to stop doing that. Taking the characters that you play and make them like you really that way. I don't, I don't recall ever seeing this man in the news, to be honest. On the other hand, I don't know if the people who are talking are people who know him. And why would they be saying that? Um, <laughs> I guess at the end of the day, if I had something to say, it would be... It is my hope that he he's not just on his son because she's dating Sasha Obama. And that is not just because he's dating in the public. But that this is something he says to his son, no matter who he's dating, where, when, how, why. But that this is something that he speaks with him about in general. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. I hope you were informed. <laughs> I, um, I hope that um, the, you will be back here with us next time when we come back next Tuesday with more hot topics. Um, tomorrow we're going to we have a special feature on migration, migration matters, and we're going to be looking at um, uh, one a migrant story told by the storyteller at IOM, that's International Organization Organization for Migration. So please come back tomorrow nine o'clock for that. But um, it is our hope that your day will be one of the best you've ever had. I want to thank you so much for staying with us. Thank you for your time, your interest, your comments, your likes, your shares, your subscribe, your your subscription. <laughs> your subscribe your subscription and you know what we wish all the people we just talked about we wish them all the best we wish you positive life outcomes okay positive life outcomes no matter who you are where you're from celebrity or no thank you for what you do and we wish you all the very best um in your life thank you so much i'm dj kelly and this has been fun <laughs> um it's been it's been good hanging with you see you next time Goodbye.